episode one laid the groundwork, did the heavy lifting, and introduced some changes to the Wheel of Time. Episode two is where the story and character development start to pick up. Join me today in my spoiler-filled review and reaction to episode two of Amazon's Wheel of Time TV series. Now before getting started, quick thank you to the video sponsor, Audible.com, but more on them in a bit. Let's hit the spoiler warning for the video. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of red, with spoilers through episodes one and two of season one of the Wheel of Time TV show. There will not be any book-specific spoilers in this episode, outside of what you see on the TV show. So let me kick this off with my general thoughts. I thought episode two was a massive improvement upon episode one, where the pacing in the first episode was super rushed, episode two slowed down, and let us get to know the characters and develop attachments to them. I think that episode two benefits from having many of the changes already established from episode one. So once you're accustomed to some of those, this just feels better. So let's start with some of the things I loved from episode two. First of all, the cold open with Eamon Valda and the White Cloaks was awesome. It was the perfect way to set them up to be actual villains rather than kind of inept like they are in the books. Abdul Salis was awesome as Valda. He immediately has the love to hate you vibe. He's menacing in a way that actually feels dangerous, like he could hurt our characters. This is a far better opening shot than the first episode by a long shot. It does raise the question of how in the world they captured an Aes Sedai, but like I said in my episode one review, they are going for a show not tell strategy with this show. And so likely things like that, we're gonna find out later. They are not gonna exposit and explain everything to us right up front wait for it. I absolutely loved the intro sequence with the threads of the pattern weaving a tapestry. I hope down the road that they can change this up to show things that are pertinent to the story at the time. Like in a similar way to the symbols that change in the Witcher credits or the map that's different every time in Game of Thrones. I love it when the title sequence is different and when it's a part of the watching experience. I also absolutely loved the dream sequence. The bat was super creepy. Uh, that was super disgusting, pulling that out of his throat. I hope that was CGI and not he was actually pulling something out of his throat. That would have been nasty. The figure with the red eyes, which I'm not going to name for the sake of keeping spoilers out of this, that was perfect. I loved the way that was executed. This is certainly very, very scary, and I love the way they're leaning into some of the horror elements. I wish they actually leaned into those horror elements harder, but I, I do love the direction so far. Another thing I loved from this episode was the way they explained the three oaths and then later actually showed us how they were used. Now, this could have come across as very heavy exposition, which could have felt really clunky. I mean, somebody just sitting there and explaining this would have gotten the point across, but it might have been kind of weird dialogue. I was a huge fan of the way they delivered it as a question from Moraine to Egwene, and then Moraine had to explain it, we got to see her then bend the truth when speaking to the White Cloaks, which I loved because not only did she explain it, then she showed us. It's gonna help teach non-book readers how Aes Sedai can be very tricky with their words. I hope that sets up a lot of speculation and paying attention to what the Aes Sedai in the show say, as it should. I am super glad they included the Weep for Manetherin speech from Moraine. Giving the backstory to their homeland to the group of kids was awesome, and hearing Rosamund deliver the iconic speech was just outstanding. As an aside, you can hear her deliver that exact speech word for word from the books in the new audiobook version of Eye of the World that is narrated by Rosamund. You can pick this up for free using www.audibletrial.com forward slash Nablus. You'll get a free audiobook from Audible that you can keep regardless of whether you keep their service or not. And the audiobooks are a great way to do a read along with the show, especially if you want to be able to see where the changes are and what things are the same. Big thank you to Audible for sponsoring the video. Again, head to www.audibletrial.com forward slash Nablus and pick up your free audiobook and get the new version of Eye of the World. All right, back to the video. Another thing that I loved generally was how they did not make the White Cloaks all evil. Jeff from Bornhold was a nice counter to Valda. He displays that grandfatherly vibe that we know him for. I do have a bone to pick with this scene, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Generally, I love some of the choices they made in the episode, especially the choice to slow down the pace and have a bunch of character moments. We got great dialogue and a great feel for who these characters are. There were also some explanations to things that happened in episode one. Like they explain a little bit about why Matt would have left his sisters, that they are going to be taken care of, because I thought that in the first episode and they did address it here, which... Gives me hope for some of the other things that were missing in episode one. 
I think they're going to probably address them throughout the series. They know that was rushed, and this is probably a part of the strategy. Shadar Logoth looked great, and there was certainly an eeriness to it. I loved the sets. I loved what they did with Nynaeve having her show up at the end of the episode. I was for sure hooked. I wanted to see what came next at that point. But let's transition to some of the things that I did not love from this episode. First, I wish we had more time in Shadar Logoth. Yes, it's actually longer than I thought. It's about 15 minutes of the episode, but I would have loved to have spent longer and seen more of the city. It's a big part of the world building, and I would have loved to have seen the Trollocs actually come into the city, showing how desperate the Shadow is to get to them, that they would actually do that even though they don't want to go in. Another minor issue to me was Jeff from Bornhold, as I mentioned earlier, recommending that Moraine find an Aes Sedai to heal her wound. Yes, this is very grandfatherly and something that a nice guy would do, and Jeff from Bornhold can be a nice guy, I guess, but it is very much against their religious views. So it felt out of place for them to say that to me, even if he's a nice white cloak, white cloaks are still not usually cool with that. So I thought that was a little odd. Another thing I didn't like, even if I understand the necessity of the change, was the loss of a particular major town that the group stops in in the books. There was always going to be a need to cut some things, and I absolutely understand the reason to cut that. But overall, one of the reasons that I think it feels off in general as we're watching this is it's just the group traipsing across the wilderness right now. We aren't getting the feeling necessarily that this is a large lived in world, even if I know we're going to see that later. By not having that stopping point, it just feels like they're galloping around in the woods rather than actually going anywhere. So I would have liked to have seen that particular stop, but I do understand why it's not there. The other result of not getting there is that we still don't have the fish out of water feel for the kids. Yes, they're learning as they go, but it, it seems like they're a little bit more adjusted to being in the world rather than being completely ignorant at every turn like they are in the books. Uh, despite those criticisms though, they are fairly minor criticisms in my opinion. I loved the episode. I thought it was a vast improvement over the first one, and I felt like this truly felt like Wheel of Time to me. I love the character moments, and I love that we're continuing to build the size and scope of the world. Episode 1 really did do the heavy lifting, in my opinion, so that Episode 2 and beyond could really start developing and furthering the story. So I thought this was a great step in that direction, and an overall much better episode. As for the score, I would give episode two a very solid eight out of 10. It was not perfect, and there were few incredible standout moments. That really wasn't the point of the episode. We are meeting and learning about our characters, and the episode was well-paced, and it did its job of developing out those characters and pulling me further into the story, and I loved the way it ended setting up the next episode. We are now set up to follow multiple plot lines, which I think is always more entertaining than following the same group just going together everywhere. What did you guys think of episode two? Did you like it better than episode one? Let me know in the comments of the video. Make sure also like the video and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I get more Wheel of Time content out there. I'm gonna be releasing a lot here over the next few months. Really, all I do here is make Wheel of Time stuff. So we'll have more reviews, we'll have more episode breakdowns coming soon, and then I'll be getting back to a lot of the book-based lore content once the show is over. Check out the Patreon if you want to support the channel, and make sure to grab your free audiobook from Audible by clicking the link in the description of the video. Thanks everybody for watching, and until next time, peace out.